You're listening to the Word Slinger Podcast, episode 84, Soulful PR with Janet Murray. Writing a book. It can be the best way to build or grow your business, or to simply tell the story that you wish to tell. Learn how to write your book in 30 days or less. Pick up 30-day author today from Amazon, Apple iBooks, or other online retailers. It's the Word Slinger Podcast, where story matters. Build your brand, write your book, redefine who you are. It's all about the story here. What's yours? Now, here's the guy who invented pants optional, Kevin Tomlinson, the Word Slinger. Word Slinger. Hey everybody, this is Kevin Thompson, the Wordslinger. Uh, I may be the only Wordslinger you know. I'm not the only Wordslinger out there, though. I've, I've been kind of looking around, and there are people who uh, who have co-opted that name. I don't think they did it because they're trying to take it from me or anything. I think they just... It was coincidence. Cosmic coincidence. There's a, a, a tribe, a race of Wordslinger out there. So, And I am happy to be one of them. I'm trying to be the chosen one of them. <laughs> anyway, let's move on from that. That was kind of lame. Uh, so I am glad you're here. I'm having a conversation today with someone um, I, I love. Um, she and I connected. I, I think, actually, we connected after she heard me on the uh, Creative Pen podcast with Joanna Penn. And I'm talking to Janet Murray. She's the founder of uh, Soulful PR. She has the Soulful PR podcast, which you definitely should listen to. Um but I, I really enjoyed this conversation. I, I like her a lot. I like Janet a lot. Janet, if you're listening, I like you a lot. <laughs> she's, uh, she's very genuine, first of all. She knows her craft. She knows her trade. Um, she's got a great background. She, this, is a, this is one of those interviews that I, I covet because um, I, get, I get so much out of it personally. And I know you will, too. And PR is one of those things that, uh, there, well, there's a mythology around it. And sometimes we get confused about what it actually is uh, and what it isn't and how to do it. And so uh, I, w- I was very glad to have Janet on the show. Now, uh, before we hop in, just that quick housekeeping stuff. Uh, if you are a fan of the show, a devotee, as, as it were, <laughs> if you, uh, well, if you dig it, if you dig the show, uh, I would appreciate the support. Um, I would appreciate your support. And one of the ways you can do that is to go online and rate the show. Uh, I'm not getting as many reviews as I, as I really kind of need because I don't push that enough. It's bad PR. I'm doing bad PR. <laughs> but I, I could use uh, ratings on uh, iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, we're on Google Play. And if you would go and just you know rank the show, uh, I, you know give it you know five stars if you f- if you're feeling generous, I would very much appreciate that. Write a review that tells people why you love it, why you listen. Um, that will help a lot. It'll help spread the word. It'll help us find new listeners. That's always a big deal. Um, new listeners are always a big deal. If you are a new listener, hello, <laughs> and I hope you're going through the back catalog and kind of figuring out what we're all about. But here's here's the gist of Wordslinger. Um, it is a show about story. It's a, it's the story of us, right? It's the story of entrepreneurs. It's the story of uh, authors. Um, you don't have to buy, be one or the other to enjoy the people I talk to, though, because I'm talking to some of the most amazing people that I have found uh, out in the world, and I'm, I'm, I'm just growing every time I talk to someone. In case in point is this interview. So uh, I hope you enjoy this one. Now, one more way you can support this show if you go to wordslingerpodcast.com, you'll see the Patreon logo, and if you click on that, it'll let you, um, you know, you can basically uh, sign up to donate as, as, you know, as little or as much a month as you want uh, of your valuable dollars. Uh, I have a huge lofty goal. I'd love for this show to start making around 5000 a month in income. It would pay all the expenses of the show and also pay for some expansion that I have in mind. Uh, so that we can, you know, reach more people, but also just improve, uh, improve on a few things, uh, go take things to another level. That's what I'm aiming for. Uh, and I, you know, your help in that is appreciated. So you can give, I, I don't know what the minimums are, but I know people are giving, you know, as little as a dollar per episode or even a dollar per month. And if that's all you can manage from your budget, I, I appreciate every cent of it. So if you'll do that, you will help a great deal. 
Now, I don't want to keep you any more from the the real point <laughs> of this uh, of this show. Let's move right now into this interview with Janet Murray. I think you're going to dig it. It is quite soulful. And I'll see you on the other side. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I don't know where you are in the world. Uh, I know where I am. I'm in the Houston, Texas area right now. Uh, we haven't gotten in the RV yet. We haven't uh, gotten in there full time yet. But So right now we're in the Houston, Texas area still. But I'm talking to Janet Murray, who's actually in the UK right now. And it's miserable and wet and rainy right there, from what I understand. Right, Janet? <laughs> It is. It's pretty miserable and rainy, which is pretty typical for the British weather. Yes, <laughs> which makes you wonder why people stay. I don't know. Whatever. No, I, <laughs> it's, it's the food. Uh, no, uh, so uh, I'm, I got myself off track there just a little bit. Janet is a journalist and PR coach, and I follow her stuff on Twitter, and you should too. Um, it's it's brilliant uh, to see what she comes up with, the blog posts, the podcasts, uh, all things that you can – turn to as resources if you're trying to uh, build your business, build your authority in an area, uh, and just promote your work. Am I getting this right, Janet? Am I kind of nailing? Yeah, you totally okay. are, and thank you very much for the shout out on Twitter, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, we are connected, and by the way, I can hear right now that they've they've started yon- uh, yard care here at my uh, place, so we're going to have... <laughs> We're going to be serenaded by leaf blowers and uh, yard trimmers. <laughs> Sorry about that. So um, <clears throat> just to get us back on track while that guy's busy, um, I love uh, what you're posting, actually. There's been some really good ones, especially lately, and I do repost when I find things interesting. So thank you for helping out the community in that stuff. I mean, you've, you've got quite a bit of information flowing through there. How long have you been doing this? Well, I've been... I've been a journalist for the past 15 years, but mm-hmm. I started off actually as a school teacher, and mm-hmm. I guess that's kind of part of my business story. So mm-hmm. I, I worked as a school teacher for three or four years, and then I decided to retrain as a journalist, and everybody told me it'd be really hard, and I would never make it in the nationals, and I'd never be able to do it, but I was determined, and I did it. Um, and so I started writing about 15 years ago for the national newspapers in the UK, so the Guardian, the Times, the Telegraph, the BBC, all of that sort of thing really enjoyed it and I was basically kind of hustling as a as a a freelance writer selling my stories into the national so this is where my business story starts and I basically noticed something really quite early on in my career which is basically I've now built my business on top of it and what I noticed is that people were dreadful at pitching (laughs) into the media And (laughs) and I noticed that these were people who generally worked in the PR industry and were being paid to do this but they didn't have a clue what made a great media story and they would just send these endlessly awful emails and pitches that you know and you just think why on earth would you think anybody would want to read about this so I kind of thought to myself well, if these people don't know how to put a pitch together, why don't I teach them how to do it? Yeah. So I started uh, running workshops in London, first of all, with a journalist colleague of mine. And we started running these pitching workshops and we get all these PRs you know, from big companies sometimes, you know, like John Lewis and the big supermarket chains and things like that. And we'd, we'd show them how to pitch and we'd teach them not only how to write email pitches, but also how to pitch over the phone and we'd give them scripts to use and, and all this kind of stuff. Because basically that's what we had to do as freelance writers to pay our bills. We had to kind of hustle and we had to, you know, if we couldn't come up with a great pitch, if we couldn't get a great angle on the story, then we, we didn't eat. So we, we got quite good at pitching quite early on. So I carried on doing this as a kind of side thing. I was doing working as a journalist writing mainly education stories actually and business stories for the national newspapers kind of quite big sort of hefty investigative features but I got to a point a few years ago where I was a bit bored really and I was looking for a new challenge because when you're working for yourself and Mm -hmm. there's no kind of when you're freelance there's no kind of promotion or career progression I kind of I'd I'd won some awards I was getting sort of you know, really good feedback on my work but I didn't feel like I had anywhere to go and I was just feeling a little bit bored and I was actually getting to the point where I was, you know if I have to write one more big investigative feature for the Guardian I might die which is obviously quite <laughs> given the fact that you know I, that's what I'd started out that was my dream when I first started out so I basically started doing more training and consulting and teaching people how to do their own PR basically and teaching people how to understand what the media were looking for how to put a great pitch together and how to then you know do that negotiation bit with journalists and found I was kind of quite quite good at it so in the last few years I've I've created a coaching program so I've got a small group coaching program where I take 
through that. I've got a membership community. So my Soulful PR business club where I, I, I sort of have um, a library of resources that people can, can draw upon to help them. We have a weekly group coaching call, but it's a much bigger group. And I run events in London. So I run monthly events where I get journalists from big publications to come along and talk about what they're, they're looking for and what they're not looking for, crucially, and big live events in London. And my I've got a podcast and a blog. And basically, I'm just... I just love stories and I just get really excited about helping people to share their story. And I also get excited about helping. I've seen so many small business owners who I felt were being ripped off or, or authors or, or, you know, people basically running their own outfit or being freelance or so many people being ripped off really by PR companies. And, and this stuff isn't rocket science. It's just kind of common sense. And if someone can just guide you and show you the way, which I can do, then um, I can help people get some really great coverage. And, and that's really, really good fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this sort of thing, you know, I work with a lot of authors and a lot of entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, that sort of great coverage is coveted. I mean, it's it's difficult. Uh, and maybe it's easier than we think. I mean, maybe you've got a secret magic formula that makes it a lot <laughs> easier. But, you know, for some of us out here kind of in the trenches, we're kind of like, you know, I just need people to notice me. And it's sometimes very difficult. I mean, what are some like basics uh, that you can offer that, you know, where people can get started and actually get that kind of attention. It's funny actually, because I, I can walk you through my, my kind of steps that I would advise, but I did a Facebook <laughs> post yesterday actually, uh, where it was a, a kind of little mini blog post really, which was saying, like, I wish there was one thing that I could tell you <laughs> right. that would, would, would sort this out for you. But actually just like everything in your business, this is a series of steps that you take every day and mm -hmm. you do it over and over again until you get so good at it that you can do it in your sleep. I mean, I can quite literally, if somebody says something to me, I, I instinctively know whether it's a story or I know where I could put it or whatever, but it's like everything else in your business. You know, it's just kind of, you just keep doing it over and over again. And then to the point where you can pretty much be doing it in your sleep. But this is where I would tell people to start. So let's say, for example, you've got a book or you've got a product to launch or an app or whatever it might be that you, mm -hmm. you do. So the first question I would ask myself, and this is true of anything in your business really is, well, why do I want to do this? So it's all very well wanting to be in the New York Times or wanting to be in Vogue or Buffington Post or whatever it is. But actually, if that isn't moving your business forward in any way or helping you move more copies of your book or whatever it is you're trying to do, then it's nice, but it may actually be a bit of a waste of time. So I try and get people to get really clear on what it is that they're trying to do. Now, for lots of people, it is about selling stuff. So it literally might be moving books out the door, you know, like selling books. But often it's a mixture of that but it's also about building authority and so it's it's building your your authority in your particular industry your field it's being able to kind of put those badges on your site if you come to my site for example it's got as featured in the bbc the huffington post mm -hmm. entrepreneur all of those kind of titles and immediately that gives you a stamp of approval and it's like you know if those people like what you've got to say enough to, to uh, print your stuff or to talk to you, then then that's like a stamp of approval, isn't it? And it gives you kind of credibility. So there's that kind of side of it. So it can be about, you know, selling widgets. It can be about um, raising your authority and, and making you a thought leader in your field. And they're generally the two things that, that most people want to do. So it's getting clear about what it is that you want to do. Some people come to me because they want to get a book deal or right. they want to get more high-profile speaking opportunities or something like that but just getting really clear about what it is that I want to do because then you can move on to the next step which is like okay so now I know what it is I'm trying to do who do I need to get in front of to make this happen right so right. this step's so so important so if you're you've got a book about fly fishing then obviously you need to try and get and you want to sell that but you want to try and get in front of people who like fly fishing and so you know, being in the New York Times might be nice, but actually you might be better to target fly fishing. I don't I always come up with that example. Yeah, <laughs> every, fishing, everyone always falls you know, back to fly fishing. I don't know fly why. Fly fishing always <laughs> comes back to that, doesn't it? So, so you know, you, you might, it might be great for your reputation to tell your mum, you know, that you've been in the New York Times, but actually you might be better to be in fly fishing today or whatever. So it's really good to get clear. And I always suggest people sort of then make a list of three to five publications or programs that they think would help to get them in front of the people that they they want to reach and then people often ask me say well okay well how how do I know what my people like to read watch and listen to and you just ask them so you can <laughs> you know you can do a little poll you know 15 20 people who are your target avatar or audience and just say what do you read write and listen to and the only thing you have to be 
have to be really careful of is that people don't always tell the truth. So in the UK, we have the Daily Mail, which is our biggest selling newspaper. Everyone says they don't read it, but they do. And everybody <laughs> says they hate it, but they do read it. And so, so you know, just sort of some, you know, sort of taking, you know, taking it on board, but also being aware that people may not tell you the exact truth of, of, of what they they do. So, and then getting really strategic about it, like you would with anything else in your business and thinking, okay, well, instead of trying to get coverage everywhere, I'm going to concentrate on these places or these publications or programs that are really going to help me to achieve my objectives. So then once you've done that and you're clear on what it is you're trying to do, who you need to get in front of, what where you need to be, basically, then that gets into the bit which is the kind of like fun bit. And this is the active part of PR. There's some other things that you can do, which are, are kind of, you know, getting journalists to come to you. But we might get to that in a minute. But this is kind of like the, the, active, you know, the active stuff that you can do. Right, right. And the biggest mistake I see people making is they, they just sort of sit there and think, hmm, this is really interesting. I'd like to read about this or I'd like to hear about this. And they don't really think about the publications or programs that they're targeting, and they don't think, well, what content do they actually run? <laughs> like, you know, what, 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 you know, so for my example, example, actually, you shared on Twitter, my post about how to pitch yourself as a, a podcast host, mm -hmm. didn't you? Podcast guest, sorry, not a host. And, um, and as a, I have a podcast myself, the Soulful PR podcast, and what happens to me is people send me the most ridiculous pictures, which show to me that they've never actually listened to my podcast. They've not even gone and had a look at the previous episodes just to see what I run. <laughs> so, you know, for example, I had someone pitch my podcast, which was like, um, do you need an MBA to work in the tech industry? Well, my podcast is called the Soulful PR Podcast. I don't think you need an MBA to work out that that's probably not going to be a great fit. Yeah. So it's just about, it's, I mean, it sounds really obvious to read the publication you're pitching to or to watch the program or listen to it, but so many people just don't do it and yeah. you're totally missing a trick. And what you're looking for is you're not just kind of thinking, oh, right, this is a fly fishing magazine. So yeah, clearly they're going to do something about my fly fishing app that I've created what you're doing is really digging down a bit deeper and looking for slots so you might say oh look on the back page every issue they have an interview with a fly fisher <laughs> and, yeah. uh, I don't, and or oh look you know on page four every week they uh, they have a first person accounts of you know, the, the biggest fish you ever caught, whatever it might be. And I'm getting a bit stuck on this fish example. <laughs> but, I hope it, but, it, but it's about, um, I often think it's a bit like, you know, those children shape sort of toys. You know, those when children get, they, they, they have those sort of, those wooden toys where you get a, you get a block or you right, get a right. tube and you have to fit it into the right shape and you see children trying to do it and puzzle it out. And that's essentially what it's like. It's not just about coming out up with an idea. It's about coming up with an idea that fits into the right slot. So, so you know, a journalist will have a very clear idea on what kind of content they run. They'll have certain slots which run every month, every week, or whatever. And people basically come with the wrong shape. So they come with a square shape story when, when uh, they're looking for something round, if you see what I mean. Right, and all you need right. to do is, is just got to read the publication for a few weeks or a few editions or listen to it for a couple of episodes. And you should very, very quickly be able to get a sense of what they cover and what they don't cover. And that's really kind of all it is. And then then, then you're on to your kind of pitch, which is the next stage. Do you want me to go on and what, um, in terms of what you do next? <laughs> <laughs> sure, all you want. I will say this, though. Um, the authors in particular, or writers in particular, are to be very familiar with that concept, though, because that's the exact advice you get when pitching, like, say, a short story to a short story magazine. Like, go yeah. and read that magazine so you understand, you know, the content that they're after and the style that they have. Yeah. And so they should be familiar with that. I was, I will say, I get people pitching to my show constantly that it, it's very clear they've never once listened to an episode. <laughs> and that's exactly. infuriating to me. But, uh, you know, and sometimes they work out as guests, and but a lot of times they don't. So. Mm. Yes, yeah, I would love to hear more. It's a bit of a kind of insult, isn't it? It's, it it's is, like yeah. you say going to a short story magazine and pitching romantic fiction when you know they never ever do that. You know, they do right. horror or something, and you come along and you pitch a, you know, a, a romance story yeah, or something. Yeah, it's, it's very much here's what you can do for me. That's what that's mm. what it feels like. And uh, yeah. though I am happy to help people any way I can, <laughs> yeah, I have, you know, yeah. I have an audience to please here. Yeah, so. yeah, and the thing is, as a, as a, I mean, this is the same as an editor, but as a a podcast host or an editor 
you're looking for two things really you're just looking for great content for your audience you don't mm-hmm. really care about where it comes from or who they are that sounds right. awful but that's the truth of it you don't you know you don't really sort of care so much about pleasing people or, or being nice or whatever it's about getting great content but what you also want to do in, in, the, in the case of a podcast is then and this is the bit where a lot of people go wrong with me is that I want to then be able to direct them off somewhere else so you know I only want to interview people on my podcast who've already got a bit of a platform so that I can send people off to their blog or their podcast right. Right. and also they've got a bit of an audience so that they can promote you know they can promote the episode and they've got people to promote it to so that we can spread it further between us so so it's just it's just thinking this is all kind of obvious stuff but it's just kind of thinking about this so so yeah it's about kind of it's about taking yourself out of the situation that sounds counterintuitive doesn't it because if you're trying to get press coverage for your business or your book or you know it's kind of like well surely it should all be about me 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 but I can tell you the best piece of advice I can give you is to make it all about them and the more that you can just focus on look here's some this could be really great content for your audience you will get the rewards because you'll still get that plug for your business but or book or whatever it is but you you're not going to kind of annoy them you're you're going to be coming up with really good stuff and you know journalists they're not interested in adverts if you want to buy an advert you have to pay for that and <laughs> they're, they're interested in genuinely great content and I mean I can give you some examples of the kind of things that I've done that where I've got great coverage for my business which which might kind of help put it into perspective for your listeners so I often say to people to look around the edges of your business I've got this lovely handout that I give to my clients and in it's almost like a sort of Venn diagram and in the middle it's got your business or brand and then it's got the different areas of your life around it so it's got work it's got relationships it's got um oh what else has it got health hobbies and it's got all the different other sort of parts of your life that intersect with your business basically so the best press coverage I've got nobody's ever asked me to write anything or to interview me about my business not yet it could happen in the future but not yet but I've got some great coverage about the fact and I'm looking at it now outside my window but I work in a shed generally at the bottom of my garden apart from when I'm doing podcast interviews Mm -hmm. and it's one of these chic fancy sheds and it looks like it's kind of out of a glossy magazine or something it's very kind of smart looking and there's a bit of a thing I don't know if it's universal but in the UK we have this thing about chic sheds and lady sheds and she sheds we call them so I've been featured in the metro which is one of the um, UK's big commuter newspapers talking about my shed and what I do in there and the work that I do and and this article was about sheds it wasn't about it wasn't about my business it was about women who work in sheds basically (laughs) I've been featured in a few of the big supermarket magazines talking about exactly the same thing and if you look at the quotes in it I'm saying things like oh well you know I love this shed because it really reflects what I'm all about. I run this kind of business and this is what I do here. I have people for training courses. And, and so it's a great plug for my business, but the article isn't about my business. Um, I've also written stuff. I wrote a piece for The Guardian, which did really well about why women need to stop working for free. And that was because I was constantly being approached to speak at conferences. And I'd say, yeah, that sounds great. What's the rate? And they'd say, oh, we hope you do it for the exposure. And so I, I did this piece. <laughs> I did this opinion article, which did really well. And you know quite literally people read that article there was only a brief mention of what I did but then they come to my website and I've actually had people sat in front of me in London at events that I've been speaking at or or events I've been running because they read that article Um, I did another one recently because I travel a lot with my work and I've got a 10 year old daughter I did a piece on on how when I say that I'm going abroad with my work people often say oh what does your daughter think about that and who's going to look after your daughter and I'm like well she's got a dad and he looks after her and you know that's <laughs> right. I'm setting a good example so I did a piece about that and about you know does that make me a bad mother because I travel with my work that did really well and often it is those stories about the things that intersect with your business rather than being directly about your business that right. actually are the things people are interested in if you think about it you know I mean you're all about the stories as well aren't you it's mm-hmm. just like People, when they start talking to the press, it's like they start, they're interesting people who know how to tell interesting stories and they know what's interesting. They know what makes a good story. They know the kind of stories they want to hear. But the minute they start trying to get something in the media, they start to tell stories which are like the equivalent of I did the washing up or, (laughs) you know, I loaded the dishwasher and, you know, I won an award or I've got this really great new book or um and you know obviously that is a great thing but so have thousands of other people got a new book out on a similar topic and you know this is the sort of tough thing about it so it's really thinking about what are the stories that you like to hear you know what 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 would sort of have you sitting 
or it's kind of like you know if you're if you're driving somewhere and the radio is on in the car what would make you sit there and not get out because yeah. you were so engrossed in that story that's the bit that you're really looking yes, for and I, 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 I refer to those that. Those are, I actually literally refer to that as driveway stories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Where> <laughs> you, you're so yeah. engrossed that you can't get out of your car until you finish, you hear the rest of that story. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's a goal. Yeah. And it's a, it's a good, it's an interesting thing for authors as well, because I think even though authors write stories, mm-hmm. I struggle a lot when authors come for help with their PR because they write stories. They know what makes a great story right. when it comes to fiction. Or, but when it comes to selling their story, they suddenly go, well, why don't people just want to write about my book? And <laughs> and, 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 and it's, they suddenly really kind of start to to struggle with it. So it, it's yeah. really thinking about, I mean, there's something else I say quite a lot. It's the Facebook test. So say you've got an idea for a story that might work well in the media. So mm-hmm. you say to yourself, if I was going to post this on my Facebook, my wall now, right. would people like it? That's probably okay. It's probably semi-interesting. Would they share it and comment on it? That's probably quite interesting got some potential would they be divided on it that's probably the the golden one is it is it an issue that people would have different opinions so like my story about traveling when I'm a mother you know some people didn't agree with me um I've written stuff about I wrote something for the Huffington Post about why I didn't like holidays and and um and uh, people didn't some people didn't agree with that and said I was mean because you know, I should just take my daughter on holiday all the time and how could I be so... So when people are divided, you know, like you said, it's that driveway thing. It's that kind of thing. You think, well, what, what would I do in that situation? Right. Or, you know, it's that, that kind of thing. So does that help a bit? I know I said I was going to talk about pictures and I've got a bit kind of slightly <laughs> sidetracked. No, no, that's, uh, that's exactly what I hope for every time I talk to anyone. See, you're doing exactly what you preach, actually. You're, you're making an interesting story that isn't just... I've written a book or I offer a service or <laughs> or something boring like that. And I think that authors in particular, um, I think what happens is we get trained uh, to believe that that uh, the only time we can tell the story is when we're actually writing the book, you know. Like the rest of the time, it's a different part of our brain that has to be engaged, you know. And I am all about the story. <laughs> I try to, try to make everything an interesting story, but I, I flub it sometimes. So what are some uh, tricks maybe that authors in particular, or any entrepreneur really, but authors in particular yeah. might use to uh, get their head back into telling a story about their work? Well, a couple of examples actually that sort of come to mind because I, I like seeing what authors do for their PR. And I actually had quite a successful author say to me recently, I was absolutely floored, oh, well, traditional PR doesn't work so that's why I don't do it oh. and I was just I was just like I, I, you're obviously not doing it right then because if you were doing it right then so I've got this client at the moment and to be fair it is a great story so um so this my client came to me and she has written a book with her daughter and that's immediately quite interesting she's written a, a book with her teenage right. daughter um and it's a novel but it's called never mind the thigh gap and it's basically her daughter was having some body image issues and she was basically worried she was too skinny. So in order to help her get get over her body image issues, her mum said, well, why don't you go into a beauty competition? <laughs> so she did. And the two of them have written this novel together, which is kind of loosely based on the fact that, that her daughter was in this this beauty competition. Now, in the UK, I don't know what it's like in the US, but that's the kind of subject we would get quite excited about and quite upset and quite divided about putting your daughter in a beauty competition I'm not sure if it would be the same in the US but it's like one of those kind of hot potato issues so basically that's what she's done you know she's instead of going to the newspapers and saying hey do you want to write about my book that I wrote with my daughter she's gone and said hey my daughter was having some body image hang-ups so I put her in a beauty pageant that's the story and obviously as part of that she she says oh and you know as part of the way that we worked this through was we we wrote a book together she just recently had another piece which is very divisive actually and not all of your listeners may want to go this divisive don't you know don't worry I'm not suggesting you all do this but um, she she recently had a piece in the Daily Mail which is what you know one of our sort of right-wing newspapers which Uh uh, divides people quite a lot Um, and it was about how girls should be able to teenage girls should be able to dress as they want because she'd noticed she let her teenage daughters dress in quite a revealing manner but she'd had some people sort of make comments about it when she'd been out and about on the tube and whatever and this story was so she wrote the story for the daily mail and again as part of it she mentioned that she'd then got on to write a novel with her daughter (laughs) and um she ended up being on 
our biggest daytime TV show in the UK talking about this very issue. And the story was then picked up and reported in another couple of newspapers. So it really is about that driveway stuff. It is about kind of pulling out. So so um, let's just say you haven't got anything quite that dramatic. So <laughs> there's an author in the UK called Adele Parks, and she's a, a, a chick lit author, you know, like a, a romantic fiction author. She's written about 15 books now, I think. Every time she has a book out, I look to see what she does. And basically she pulls out a story from her personal life, which relates to the topic of the book. And so the last one I think I saw was how she'd had like eight marriage proposals or something like that. <laughs> and so she goes to the paper and says, oh, you know, I've had eight marriage proposals. Would you be interested in me writing a story about this for you or interviewing me or whatever? And then at the end, it says she tells the story. It's a fascinating story about her being proposed to eight times or whatever it is. And at the bottom, it says and Adele Parks' new novel is published by Hodder and Storm, whatever it yes. is. Um, and that's the, and it's almost like you have to tip it upside down and you want to put your book at the top of it. You want mm. you, you want to be screaming about your book. Now, obviously, if you've just written the, the new Fifty Shades of Grey, that is the right title, Fifty Shades of Grey. I always yes. want to say 40 or 60 or something. <laughs> no. Obviously, if you've just written Fifty Shades of Grey, then, you know, that story in itself your book is interesting enough but right, if right. you you know you, you're just it says awful but you know a bog, bog standard book then you're going to have to kind of you know find a personal story and there was another author in the UK called Rebecca Campbell and she's sort of like a spirit she's a bit like um Gabrielle Bernstein like a sort of spiritual leader type person and she'd written this book called Light is the New Black and and I noticed an article in Red Magazine which is you know a very sort of popular women's glossy and she'd written about you know why it's okay to be single or something like that and then at the bottom it had a plug for a book so I think when you're going for book stuff it is about looking around the edges of your brand your business in this case your book and looking at those areas of your life where you've got interesting stories to tell where you've got those driveway stories and then using those as a way to kind of give you an excuse to talk about your book does that kind of make sense yes yeah actually you have me like sitting here like okay what could I pull together what stories do I have? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it's funny because I actually don't spend that much time uh, doing this sort of PR. Like, I don't – I used to try to do this a lot. And uh, I used to work in journalism, so it was a little easier. But I, I don't do this now. And now I'm kind of thinking, well, I may be missing out on some opportunities here. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, I heard you being interviewed on a podcast um, about your travels mm -hmm. and – how you got rid of all your stuff as well, didn't you? You got yes. rid of loads of stuff yeah. um, before you bought your, what do you call it? Is it an SUV? You call uh, it? An Was RV, it yeah. Oh, uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. we just got a big van or something. It is. It is. It's a very, very big van is what it is. Um, <laughs> the size of a small house. <laughs> yeah, and I was absolutely compelled listening to you talk about that. Yeah. Um, I think and I tweeted you actually to say I really enjoyed. I think that's the how we connected. Yeah, and you know what's yeah. funny is you bring that up, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I do that. Yeah. I, I I do podcasts. I just don't pitch the papers and stuff that often. But yeah, um, the, you're but right. I was, I was thinking as I heard you tell that story, I was like, that's such a good media story. And um, there's a I was on this travel podcast, a travel summit type thing recently. Was, there was this couple yeah. who had they're living like a laptop lifestyle, running a business, right. and they'd had a piece in the Daily Mail again. It's not always the Daily Mail about how they'd saved <laughs> up a deposit for a house. <laughs> it, honestly, if you want to get in front of a lot of people, that's I'm, where you need to be. I'm thinking I'm going to pitch <laughs> the Daily Mail like five minutes after you and I hang up this call. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> you totally need to do this. But they pitched this story about how they'd they'd um they'd saved up a deposit for a house and just decided to blow it all on around the world trip. And yeah. again, you know, that's a really divisive story because, you know, some people would say good on you. I would say good on you. Like, you know, you've got to enjoy your life. Whereas a lot of people say, oh, no, that's not very sensible. So they got a lot of coverage. And there was another story about some travel bloggers that I saw, which was um, very clever. And they were backpacking around the world with a four month old baby. And again, yes. you know, so it's about this. So, so when I heard you being interviewed and he heard you about talking about getting rid of all your sort of stuff, and I think it was something like, wasn't it an organ or a harpsichord or something? There was some sort of like, st um, what was it that your wife didn't want to get rid of or something? Oh, that, um, well, <laughs> it was so very close. No, it was a bed actually that she didn't That's want to it, get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> but organ, har harpsichord, very close. <laughs> very close. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the thing I was compelled by, and I was, and I was really wrapped by the story of 
you you know being minimalist and, and yeah. going on the road and and that's where really where i would be looking for you to to get press coverage for your books you know that that's what oh, I would i'm be. totally doing this now i mean because <laughs> you're you you have a, you make a very good point and and the thing was and you know i've done several of those interviews and they've all been about that right so they've not been about my work specifically but i do get people who, who come in off of those interviews and buy my books and get on my mailing list mailing list and that sort of thing mm-hmm. So yeah. it's, there's no like direct, like there's, it's all, it's all sort of to the side a bit, but it, it does happen. So I can see where now, I'm, now you got me all excited. I'm going to go. <laughs> 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 it's all about the stories. It is yeah. about that. You know, like um, as a journalist, I'm sure you feel it, you know, if you've worked in journalism, but when you get a great story, you actually feel it in your stomach. You know, you kind of yeah. like your stomach turns over and you're like, oh yes, that's a great story. And it yeah. is just all about the stories. And yeah. And I think the more people can think of it like that, you know, the the better luck they're, right. they're going to have. And it's like you said, you know, people tell stories for a living mm-hmm. and then they forget that they can tell. You know, I, I tell stories in my email. My email marketing basically is just telling stories. You know, I just tell a different story every week <laughs> that, <Right. laughs> that, 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 that makes a point about what I, you know, what I want people to learn or even what I want them to buy at the, you know, that time. And I think... That's that's the thing. But I said I was going to talk about pitching, didn't I? And I'm, yes. I, I keep going off on track. <laughs> We're um, fine. Now, this is great information. But yeah, if you want to talk about pitching, let's let's do it. <laughs> I'm just conscious. Once I get off on going off on it and coming up with the examples. That's I what this show is, about. though. Yeah. This this show is really, it, for like 80 episodes now, it's just been me going off on tangents with someone else. So you're all, <laughs> you're fine. Oh, that's good. So, so with the pitching, I'd say now once you've got an idea, you need to track down the right person to get it in front of. Now, this is getting more complicated because mm-hmm. we haven't just we haven't just got the traditional media now. This is what I think a lot of people when they're trying to do PR for the first time they get stuck in this bit. And actually, I'm writing a book at the moment, and, and I was I'm just been trying to kind of. Um, a non-fiction book about how to do PR and trying to wrestle with this myself, how I explain all of this. But people say, well, what's the difference between pitching to a blog or the Huffington Post or the New York Times? And so the way I generally explain it is obviously you've got your single author blogs, which is the kind of blog that I've got, or a podcast. Then you might have multi-author blogs like Mind Body Green or mm-hmm. Tiny Buddha or whatever. Then you've got your, you know, they're kind of popular and the Good Men Project is another one, I think. Then you've got your large news sites like Huffington Post, Forbes, Entrepreneur, Business Insider, and then you've got your sort of traditional press, so your Guardian, BBC, Online, New York Times, Washington Post, that, you know, that sort of thing. And I think for people who are looking to do, you know, promote a book, while it's brilliant for you to be, you know, single author guest blogs or multi-author sites, that's great, but where you really want to be going for is those large news sites or the traditional media now the trouble is this is a very kind of complicated landscape now it's getting more complicated so the likes of business insider entrepreneur those kind of places forbes they all have their own different sort of submission guidelines so and if you go into their websites you can normally find out what it is so i write for entrepreneur and what i had to do there was i initially wrote a piece and pitched it i found an editor I just did some digging, found an editor that I thought probably looked after the kind of tough topics that I wanted to talk about. And I hunted him down on Twitter. Actually, I think maybe a friend, I asked a friend who wrote for them if he could give me a steer on the right person. But you can you can normally find this stuff out on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever. Um, And then so you send your, your first piece in and they say yes or no. And then once you get that first piece through, you get put on their content management system and then you can basically upload stories whenever you want although right. i think if you did it too much you could probably get, they probably would get fed up of you so i've got a piece in the queue it's like 80th in the queue or something at the moment so god knows when that will go live <laughs> huffington post is the same yeah. um so m- most people i speak to i write for huffington post uk where it's different you have to pitch to an editor and then you have to wait for them to get back but then once you're signed up you can write whenever you want within reason um huffington post people i've heard have the most luck pitching directly to Ariana Huffington so the trick that I've learned is to hang out on her Facebook page see what she's talking about on Twitter at the moment it's sleep all the time because she just published this book on sleep yeah and then say something like oh I just noticed your really interesting piece on whatever could I write you a piece on this and and you're basically trying to make that 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 kind of link and again once you're in you're in you know you can you can 
blog for them anytime you want. And the Huffington Post has a book widget, which you may know. I don't know if you write for Huffington Post. Um, has a book widget, so you can actually link directly. You know, you can sell books off yeah. your uh, off there, which is brilliant. Um, I guess probably lots of your audience will know about that already. Um, but I'm always surprised how many people don't actually. So <laughs> it's worth reminding people. Um, and you can do really well like that. So and but they all have different rules. So the thing is, you've got to try and work out what they are. So I would always try and find the name if you possibly can find the name of a person who looks like they manage the section. So I was talking before about the you know the fly fishing example. But mm-hmm. you know, does this if if you've you know if you're pitching to entrepreneur you don't just pitch to any old editor you need to try and find you know they have different series so they have something called i think working live and they have something like called second shift and if you can try and work out who actually edits that particular section or vertical they call it you've got much more chance of getting getting your idea accepted and so it is a lot of digging and a lot but but once you've done it a few times you just get really quick at it and really good at it so so i can pretty much case out a publication i can find contacts quite quick and there's a few hacks that you can use as well to help you with that um there's a, a email hunter that you can use to try and find people's email addresses so once you've got the right name then you can sort of whittle it down and try and get their the right email format um what else is there i'll think of it i've got a few other little tricks as well which i'll think of in a minute but linkedin's really good as well um to get people's job titles so then you get to the point where you're going to write your pitch and a lot of people waste huge amounts of time on press releases um in fact there was an author i've got a facebook group and there was an author who's just got a book out who came into my facebook group recently and he's just going on and on about this this press release and i was just like look forget the press release what's your story you know what are you going like right. you're so obsessed with getting this press release right that actually and and i think well the irony is so if you come to my website you'll see in big bold letters <laughs> uh, my opt-in is a, a course on how to write press releases and the reason that is is because when people start to do pr it's often it's just something they know about they've heard about press releases so they were just like that you know it's a way of getting people in and then I try and educate them about the fact that there are other ways to get press coverage um but if you just send out a say you've got a book coming out and you send out a press release then essentially what you might as well do is get a pack of playing cards and just throw them in the air and hope that one of them lands in the right place because every publication is different you know they yes lots of them do reviews but they might might do it differently. They might have a different approach to where they, they do it. They might want different things from you. So really, if you want to be successful, it's like you need a tailored approach. So you might use the same press release or a picture as a kind of template, but you adapt it. Because it's essentially, it's also a bit like a, a dating analogy I sometimes use. It's like going up to somebody and, you know, going up to, in a bar to... 60 different girls and just using the same chat up line on them, you know like right. you know somebody might somebody might take pity on you and say <laughs> yes or whatever or it might just suit them to hook up with you that night but actually if you really want to you know find the right person and get the best fit you need to you know you're going to be in there finding out you know what they like and what they don't like and and trying to say the right things you know and that's that's the kind of way to do it um so a press release is good, but I think if your whole PR strategy is just like, I've written a book or I've got a new course <laughs> or I'm just, I'm just going to send a press release out, then you're probably not going to do very well. So I would always recommend the pitch strategy that maybe you create a press release as a, it's almost like an information document for journalists that you can kind of paste into your email. Um, but it's the pitch for me. It's like the email pitch, the subject header, journalists are just inundated with stuff like this you know press releases pitches every day they they can't possibly open them so um label up it sounds stupid but story idea or pitch or you know if you're pitching podcasts or in podcast interview pitch whatever and then just summarize your story people try and be clever especially writers they think well i'm going to use loads of big words and be really clever (laughs) (laughs) um but actually to a very busy journalist who's getting hundreds of this stuff your clever pun that you've spent ages working on might just go over their heads and you've like kind of missed their their chance so i don't know say you've got a new horror book out or something you know you might think it's really funny to play on the word horror and say horror show at the circus or something and I think that sounds really clever that probably doesn't sound very clever at all but actually you know if your if, if your story is about you know a murder that takes place in a circus tent then that's kind of what you need to say that doesn't sound yeah. like a regular plot for a book there's probably a reason why I'm not a novelist isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, so so you can see the difference though if you try and be clever and try and do punning actually 
you know, they haven't got a clue what you're talking about, basically. So, yeah. um, so then I always say to people, try and get your top line. So get your, you know, the, the story idea that you've got in the first line of your pitch. A lot of people make the mistake of doing a whole like three paragraphs. Hi, you know, my name's Joe Smith. I've written this horror book and it's my fourth in the series of the Ted Smith series or whatever. And, you know, you've lost them already. Yeah. Um, but if you get straight in and say, look, I was wondering if you'd be interested in a story about the time I got in a fight with a crocodile. Um, and then they go, oh, that sounds interesting. And then you say a bit more and then you say, um, you know, well, actually, this has inspired my book, you know, the Crocodile Hunter Hunter yeah. series <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> my, my example is getting worse and worse. But if you, um, you know, just basically it's about getting your top line in that first sentence, not spending three paragraphs explaining who you are and right. your background. I mean, if it's really integral to the story, if you've written a stories, you know, about diamond hunters or something and like you, because you used to be a diamond hunter, then you might want to drop that in. But um, I think generally most people spend so much time introducing themselves that the journalist has kind of fallen asleep and moved on to the next thing so yeah um, but we think that's how that's supposed to go you know like yeah <laughs> i mean every time we ever see a press release a, a, a good example of a press release it's always something like that so i think we're afraid to branch out too much because we're afraid we're going to lose them you know yeah yeah <laughs> but if you think you know how you like to people to right. get in touch with you you know it's just like well you know, you just want people to send you a couple of lines. What is it? What What is it that they want, or what can they offer you? And that's and and again, it's about making it all about them. So, mm -hmm. you know, what, what you've got an idea that you think would work, and if you can be really specific, you know, I think it would work really well for your sixty-minute interview or your sixty seconds with slot that you run every Thursday. The more specific yeah. you can be, the better. And obviously, that shows that you've read the publication or you've listened to the program. So, the more that you can show that you've just taking that time it's a bit like the dating thing that you've taken that time to to find out about them and what they like and what they don't like then you know i think it's kind of funny it's a bit like dating stalk them first and then yeah. approach them with the line right yeah exactly yeah <laughs> and, and one tip i often give is to stalk you know if you're if you're wanting to get in with a particular journey stalk them on twitter you know find out what they're talking about what they're sharing right, sometimes right. you can find out that they've got an interest in a particular thing you know you, you might see that they keep posting about a certain topic and it's something that you know you've got experience of or whatever mm -hmm. um, or that you, you feel strongly about too or, you know, maybe tweet them a couple of times. And um, I mean, I do that with podcast guests generally. I didn't do that deliberately with you. I generally liked the episode. But um, <laughs> I, um, I, I generally, if there's somebody that I think, well, I'd really love to be in their podcast in the future or I'd love to, I would just make a point of, of, of sending them a message, you know, a, a tweet. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed what you put out and just, you know, so by the time you, your killer pitch hits their inbox, they've already kind of, you know, they remember your name or, or you at least seem familiar. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. No, I would love to be pitched like that. <laughs> mm, yeah. So does that kind of help on the pitching side? I feel like I I've think so. Sort of yeah. Yeah. I think you... All of my pitching knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't want you to come on and like give away every secret that you have, but I do appreciate you coming on and sharing some of this with us. Cause um, I know that everyone listening to this show, uh, whether they're an author or just an entrepreneur or both, I mean, I, you can be both. Um, they have to figure out ways to promote themselves. They have to figure out ways to get the attention of the of the audience that they're after. And I think this is um, this is it. I mean, this is there's nothing all that new about this, but I like your approach to it, and I like the storytelling approach in general. Is it, I guess where I'm going with that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so. I, I wrote um, a blog post actually specifically about something I've just remembered. Actually, um, once you get me started on this, I can't stop. Ah, I understand. Just tell me to stop in a minute. Um, but um, I wrote a blog post about storytelling and, mm -hmm. you know, I've written, I, I mean, I have written some fiction, but I'm not a published fiction author. But it occurred to me that um, the five part narrative theory, you know, the kind of, you know, everything's fine at the beginning, the equilibrium, yeah. then the equilibrium gets disrupted, then the characterized, characters recognize as a problem, then they all run around trying to put it right. And then the equilibrium is restored at the end. Mm -hmm. Different. That kind of five part narrative theory, you get that in the media as well. And this can be useful, actually, it might be useful for authors to think of it this way. But the media isn't much interested in running equilibrium stories, <laughs> much more interested in the disruption yeah. and the characters trying to put it right. That sort of phase. And this is where a lot of authors go wrong. They try and, would you like to write a story about my 
book which is doing really well in the Amazon bestseller, well, you know, who cares? Right. You know, but what I might want to, you know, might be much more interested in is that you've now got an Amazon bestseller after being a hundred thousand in debt yeah. and having to scrape yourself out of poverty. Now, that's the interesting bit. Right. That, You're right. You know, yeah. So, and it's just like fiction, isn't it? It's like um, mm-hmm. I heard somebody say, "There's, there's no." I was listening to a podcast the other day, and an author said something like, "There is only one story, and that story is a stranger walked into a bar, or something like that." Yeah. And that's how it is in the media as well. You know, we're not yeah. really interested in that kind of everything's fine and dandy sort of thing. Right. No. Yeah. I absolutely agree with that. That's uh, and you know, some of the advice you get as an author uh, if you study craft is to start with action. Right. Like mm. one of the secrets to uh, grabbing people's attention immediately is to start right in the middle of the action, which I, I took to heart with every book I wrote, that, that basically every book starts with something, you know? <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Because if you have a lot of exposition at the beginning, setting up the story, setting up the setting, you know, that stuff's boring and it loses people right away. I think journalism, mm-hmm. I know journalism, I worked in journalism, so I, it's the same idea. Uh, start with the hook, the action, and drag them along with you in the story. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are we are at time, and I don't want to keep you from your very important work and your your shed, um, which I'm looking at. I'm looking at your uh, website, and I'm assuming <laughs> these photos are from your your shed. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do you refer to it? Your shed quarters. I love that. Shed quarters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't want to keep you from all that. So I really appreciate you talking to me. I'm I have to get you back on again. I, there's so much we I think we didn't get a chance to talk about, but I am. Uh, really excited about what you've shared here, and now I'm, I'm just itching to sit down and write something and start pitching my, uh, <laughs> my story. Oh, fantastic! Diff- <laughs> I'd love to know how you get on. <laughs> yes, I will have to let you know. So, all right. Well, I will send everyone, everyone listening to this. You can actually visit uh, Janet online. You can go to JanetMurray.co.uk. That's where you'll find pictures of her shed quarters, among other things. Uh, great services. I just signed up for your uh, mailing list there, Janet. So I'm getting all your, as we've been talking, I've been watching things come in. You've got a nice, oh, healthy bounty of email for me to look through. <laughs> uh, so, so the infusion soft is working well. <laughs> exactly. So if you'd like to check her out, go online. You can find links to her website, her Twitter handle, which I definitely advise you to follow her on Twitter, her Facebook links, everything you need to learn more about Janet and her work. Thanks, Janet, so much for being on. We will talk again, I promise you. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody, stick around for the wrap-up, and I'll talk to you soon. That was my interview with Janet Murray. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got a lot out of that. Um, the One of the traits that she and I uh, share is this love of story and our, our sort of passion to help others tell their story, which is... Um, I don't know. That's it's been a guidepost for my career. Uh, it, it's changed my life actually to to start focusing on that principle. Uh, I've had a lot of interesting opportunities come my way, especially lately. Things I can't share yet. That's what kills me. I, I will uh, I will be revealing something in the uh, in the coming weeks that you will want to hear, <laughs> that you will find interesting. Particularly if you are an indie author. Um, you will find this interesting. So, uh, I, I wish I could give you more than that. I really do. <laughs> I've kind of committed to this. Uh, I could, I could reveal everything. I, there's nothing, there's nothing, uh, preventing me from doing it except me. I actually have this, this personal rule about things like this where I need to give it enough time to gestate. We'll say, so <laughs> are you enticed? <laughs> or are you just irritated? <laughs> so no, I'm sorry. Um, I don't mean to tease you, but, um, no, actually, I do. I totally mean to tease you. But I hope you enjoyed this interview. And uh, please, again, uh, just, just as we wrap up here, I would re- greatly appreciate it if you'd go on iTunes and uh, find the show, rate and rank it. Uh, iTunes in particular, that's very important. Stitcher and uh, and Google Play, I, I, it's got to be important, but I never hear anyone talk about it. <laughs> so I don't know how you listen to and consume the show. Maybe you're on the website. Um, but, uh, regardless of where you are, if you will go to iTunes, find the show, rate and rank it, go to whatever player you use, do the same. It helps me a lot. And of course, um, if you can hop in on the, uh, Patreon campaign and help support us financially, uh, that is greatly appreciated. I, I, I have yet to set up, um, rewards. I, someday I'll get around to that. I'm thinking of hiring someone to, uh, 
to take over some stuff for me. Maybe that will help. I don't know. <laughs> I just never know. I never know what to do. Um, I just improvise. I wing it through my entire life. So you get to be the recipient of that. I hope you are having a great week. I hope you have a great weekend, uh, depending on when you're listening to this. I mean, I broadcast these on Fridays, so I always assume everyone's listening on Friday. But you may be uh, at the gym or in your car or uh, taking a walk or something and listening on any given day in the future. Uh, wherever you are, I hope you're having a good day, uh, and I hope you're, you're uh, blessed. The uh, All the uh, craziness that's going on right now in the United States with the elections coming up and the uh, candidates being you know, just vile and poisonous. Um, it, it really kind of sometimes starts to bring people down. It brings me down. I, I get very uh, discouraged sometimes, you know, uh, being inundated by this negativity in the news and everything. But that's why I want this show to be something positive in your life. I, I want it to, <laughs> I want it to be uplifting, really. I mean, I want it to, I want to introduce you to new ideas and new people, maybe things you haven't heard about before. Um, Things that can help you grow in ways you maybe never considered. So that's the point. Um, so anyway, I say all that just because I, I want to end on a note of uh, hope. Uh, regardless of what may be going on in your life, I, I hope there is that ray of of hope, of, of sunshine um, there for you. And uh, if you need anything, I hope you will feel free to reach out to me. You do that. Uh, go to wordslingerpodcast.com. Click on the contact button. You can email me. Um, I am very good about responding to to practically every email. Sometimes I get some stuff that I, I, I just don't feel is appropriate to respond to. That's just you know that it's a choice by is a it, you know a choice by choice kind of thing. <laughs> so, but uh, if you if you you know just want to talk, you need, you got something to get off your chest. You want to suggest a show topic. You want to you know reach out to a guest. Just let me know. You can also do that by calling. The Word Slinger Hotline. No, I've never really called it that, but you can call me at 281-809-WORD. That's 281-809-9673. And uh, leave me a voicemail. You can ask me a question I can play on air or uh, ask me a question I can just answer directly. I, I don't mind. So take care of yourselves out there. God bless every one of you. I hope you have a safe and happy uh, you know, week, month, year, life ahead. And I will talk to you soon.